When it comes to combat sports, boxing was king for a long time. Now, it's MMA. There are dozens of promotions with male and female combatants these days, so we are going to find out a little MMA weird on today's episode of 5 Weird Things. Welcome to the channel. I watched the first UFC on pay-per-view. It was raw, brutal, and unlike anything I'd ever seen before, and I was hooked from there on. MMA is one of the fastest growing sports today globally. What is your opinion? Good or bad, put it down in the comments. All right, let's get into it. First, the things we should all know. Mixed martial arts, also known as MMA, is a term coined by television critic Howard Rosenberg in 1993 while reviewing UFC 1. The sport was initially referred to as a no holds bar or a bail tudo, which is Portuguese for anything goes. It started in Japan's Shudo organization, founded by Satoru Tiger Mast Sayama, in 1985 as a realistic and effective system of combat derived from shoot wrestling. But for most fans, MMA as we know it started on November 12, 1993 in Denver, Colorado, which was the night of UFC 1. Weird thing number five, UFC 1. UFC 1 had very few rules compared to contemporary MMA. There were no weight classes, time limits, or judges' decisions. The only prohibited techniques were biting and eye gouging. There were also no gloves, and fighters wore minimal protection, leading to a raw and unregulated atmosphere. Art Jimerson, a professional boxer, participated in UFC 1. Concerned about potential hand injuries in the unfamiliar grappling environment, he famously wore one boxing glove during his fight against Hoist Gracie. Despite his attempt to protect his hands, Jimerson was submitted in the first round by Gracie. The winner of each bout in UFC 1 was promised a purse of $50,000, while the runner-up received $10,000. Hoist Gracie emerged as the tournament champion, submitting all three of his opponents, Art Jimerson, Ken Shamrock, and Gerard Gordeau, and claiming the $50,000 prize. The financial structure was unconventional, and the UFC's financial stability was uncertain at the time. Weird thing number four. The Ultimate Fighter was the first MMA reality show. It remains the top show for the genre. The show features professional MMA fighters living together in Las Vegas, Nevada, and follows them as they train and compete against each other for a prized six-figure contract in the UFC. The first season of Tough, as it's known, aired in 2005, featured coaches Chuck Liddell and Randy Couture. However, the initial plan was for Tito Ortiz to coach against Liddell. Ortiz left the show due to a contract dispute with the UFC leading to a replacement of Randy Couture. Dana White, president of the USC, once said that Tito Ortiz would step over dollars to pick up dimes. Season 5 of Tough, known as the Ultimate Fighter Team Pulver vs. Team Penn, was marked by an infamous prank war between the fighters of the house. The pranks escalated to the point where some contestants were locking their fellow fighters out of the house, leading to tensions among the competitors and a lot of almost fights in the house. Jason Thacker, a contestant on the first season of Tough, didn't win a spot in the UFC, but he became known for a unique achievement. Thacker is the only fighter in UFC history to lose in the elimination round and still compete in a UFC event. He faced Chris Lieben in UFC 54 as a replacement for Ken Shamrock, but lost the fight via submission in the first round. I don't know if you're familiar with Chris Lieben. He is a stand-up striker. His submissions are very few and far between. So for him to be submitted by Chris Lieben, that's an achievement. Weird thing number three, the top promotions. The Ultimate Fighting Championship, affectionately known as the UFC, is the largest and most prominent MMA promotion globally. It features many of the world's top fighters and hosts events on a global scale. Bellator MMA. Bellator is another major MMA promotion known for its roster of talented fighters and regularly broadcasting events. While not as big as the UFC, Bellator has a solid following and produced exciting matchups. Bring a lot of UFC fighters after they've kind of been let go by the UFC, but they still have a name and a following. One Championship. One Championship has gained prominence in Asia and has expanded its reach globally. It features a mix of MMA and other martial arts, such as kickboxing and Muay Thai, and has signed notable fighters from various parts of the world. Weird thing number two. Three top fighters. Now, I realize people are going to argue about the three I chose. These are simply three I see being standouts among the top of the very crowded mountain. George St. Pierre. A former UFC welterweight and middleweight champion, George St. Pierre is widely considered one of the most well-rounded fighters in MMA history. His skill set included exceptional striking, wrestling, and grappling. 
Anderson Silva. Silva, a former UFC middleweight champion, had a dominant reign that included a record-setting 16 title defenses. Known for his striking prowess, Silva showcased a unique and fluid style that made him one of the most exciting fighters to watch. Fedor Emelianenko, widely regarded as one of the greatest heavyweights in MMA history, Fedor Emelianenko enjoyed a lengthy period of dominance in organizations like Pride and Strike Force, and he was known for his stoic demeanor and well-rounded skills. Fedor's legacy is solidified in the history of the sport. And when you see him, he didn't look like a fighter. He looked like a slightly chubby Russian guy. He knocked out so many people, it was fun to watch. And finally, weird thing number one. MMA as an Olympic sport. International Mixed Martial Arts Federation, IMMAF, is a global governing body for amateur MMA. It has been actively working towards the recognition of MMA as an Olympic sport. The organization focuses on establishing standardized rules, safety protocols, and promoting the amateur development of the sport. Ongoing discussions with the IOC. The International Olympic Committee has engaged in discussions with representatives from the MMA community, including the IMMAF, and while there is interest in bringing MMA to the Olympics, certain challenges such as ensuring athlete safety, standardizing rules, and addressing concerns related to the sport's image need to be addressed. Amateur and unified rules. The emphasis on amateur MMA and the adoption of unified rules are crucial factors in gaining Olympic recognition. Establishing a clear pathway for amateur fighters, ensuring fair competition, and aligning with widely accepted rules contribute to the credibility of MMA as a potential Olympic sport. Mixed martial arts as a fast-growing sport. The global popularity and growth of MMA have contributed to its consideration for Olympic inclusion. The sport's appeal, especially among younger audiences, makes it an attractive candidate for expansion within the Olympic program. Well, that's it for today's episode. Hope it was entertaining. Let me know if any opinions down in the comments. And if you're still watching, today's code word is tap out. Put that in the comments to keep your karmic guard up. Take care. Have a great night.